Just a couple bad weather fans representing New York. Talking all things sports. Man, what could go wrong? We got Alex, who's a fan of the Knicks. And Mike of the Nets. The yin-yang of the tri-state. Place your bets on the Yankees, Giants, Mets, or Jets. Yeah, you should listen if it's sparking your interest. If you made a vow to your team, don't break it. Bad weather fans is the relation. Relation. That's right. This is Bad Weather Fans, episode number 206. Mike Biseglia, Alex Benesowitz, and we are presented by DraftKings. The New York Knicks with a great comeback win versus the Indiana Pacers, led by their superstar Jalen Brunson. And the Knicks are on a nine-game winning streak. Meanwhile, in Brooklyn, the Nets losers against the Phoenix Suns. That snapped a two-game winning streak. Ben Simmons did not play, but he will be back Saturday, ironically, in Philly, to take on the 76ers, who will be without Joel Joel Embiid. Um, I would ask Alex how you're doing, but I already know the answer, so we'll skip that because I don't want to hear how you're doing. Just kidding. How are you doing? Doing great. I'm doing great. Things are going well, man. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy. Life is good, personally. Life is great, sports-wise. Uh, you know, Knicks keep winning, and it's unbelievable, even without uh, OG Ananobi and uh, Julius Randle. And Jalen Brunson is an actual superstar. I'm glad he said that. And it's 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 crazy. I, I just I don't believe that this is happening. It's one of those situations where it's like you can't even say that oh they played bad teams and you know Halliburton didn't play the end of the game because he's on a minutes restriction because he wants to make sure he's an All NBA because all he cares about is himself. You know, there, there's things like that. But you can also say on the counter side is like the Knicks smack the Nuggets by like 40 points and they also smack the Heat. By a lot of points, I don't remember the exact, but they blew them out as well. And they were both in the finals last year. They also beat the Timberwolves at one point in this run. They beat um, who else was it? There was there was one other team I can't remember that was like really good that they beat. They beat the Sixers. They they crushed. They they just been you know winning and winning and winning and winning and winning and winning. You can only play who's on your schedule, and you know they're doing that because <laughs> that's the that's how the league works. And yeah. Jalen Brunson is just unbelievable. Dante DiVincenzo has taken another step. The Knicks have the two best free agent signings of the last two offseasons in Jalen Brunson and then Dante DiVincenzo. And you got to give Leon Rose a lot of credit. And as much as I've killed him for a lot of moves, and rightfully so, he nailed those. <laughs> and then we're rolling right now. He nailed the uh, Josh Hart trade. OG Ananobi is, is hurt now, but, you know, that trade looked like it worked pretty well. I mean, I, I still think they gave up too much for him, and I'll stand by my takes on that day. But you know what? Keep winning, and that's it. That's all that matters. Just keep on winning, and I, I'm happy. And, you know, Lakers on Saturday against on national TV, bring on LeBron, man. Let's blow him out, too. Let's go. Let's just keep killing everybody. I don't even care. I just want to I just want to win, 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 no matter what. All <laughs> I know? do is win. I'm ready. Um, yeah, I mean, I can say this, and I'll reference the Nets a little bit. The Nets had one of these winning streaks last year, and yeah. I felt the same exact way. So I know what it feels like. <laughs> Um, Kevin Durant got hurt. Kyrie Irving requested a trade. Kevin Durant requested a trade, and the rest is history. Not that will not happen with the Knicks. But was it at the Garden? I don't think it was at the Garden, so it wasn't as exciting because you know the winning streak didn't take place at Madison Square Garden. Uh, okay. Um. So I know, <laughs> but I know that feeling of when you're in the moment. And I will say, last year when the Nets played, I think it was the Spurs, and there was a missed shot, and Kyrie Irving had this put put back dunk that was electric. Mm -hmm. In that exact moment, I thought to myself, they're winning the championship. I had that thought. Uh, I was completely wrong. Um, so I understand, especially for a team and a fan base that is craving success uh, to enjoy it. And I think a lot of me feels how you did when the Nets got hardened. And I'm not saying the Knicks are that team by no stretch mm -hmm. uh, at all. But at some point, you just got to tip your hat. I mean... I could sit here and be a hater and I could come up with all these different reasons why the Knicks ultimately could fail in the biggest spots. But I think that's a credit to just how much they've uh, improved and how good they are. And as long as Jalen Brunson is there running the ship, this team has a chance to win um, at point blank. He's that good. He is uh, playing like uh, an MVP. I'll go that far. This team, Knicks team last night is playing without um Quinn Grimes and then you know the depth wise they don't have Julius Randle they don't have OG Ananobi and and Jalen Brunson carries them and um you're you're right it's what's in front of your schedule obviously the Knicks schedule gets a lot more difficult the Knicks are going to lose games 
Uh, but while they're in this stretch, you take advantage of it. You compile the wins so that you maybe could be the three seed, possibly be the two seed. Uh, you take advantage of that. Uh, ultimately, for this team and the Knicks, it will come down to what they do in the playoffs. And I think I've told myself that so I don't get, as a Knicks hater, um, too upset about the wins because it'll drive me crazy. Because ultimately, it'll come down to, let's say, the Knicks are the three seed. They're going to see the Pacers, and let's say, as the six seed, the Heat as the six seed. Um, that's when, for me, I'll get into, you know, truly getting upset. But in the, in this time, um, I think I learned a lot last year as well from the Knicks uh, getting into the second round. So I'm not as upset about it. And, you know, we'll see what happens when it, when it really matters. But in the moment, Knicks are playing great. Brunson's an MVP. And my concern, Alex, for the Knicks really would be at this point, you know, what is really going on with Julius Randle? Uh, I think from the Mitchell Robinson experience, I can't trust the Knicks. And who really knows how hurt he is? Uh, it's They definitely don't want to tell you. Uh, maybe because that's the trade deadline coming up, but they're not giving you the, it's six to eight weeks, we'll see in March. They are leading you on. And with that, it could be good, it could be bad, but we don't know. Yeah, and that's fair. That's very fair. And, you know, the Knicks are only a half a game out of the the two seed with the Bucks as it stands right now on Friday, February 2nd. Happy Groundhog's Day, by the way. And, you know, it's one of those situations where you just it just helps you dream. And, and I agree with you that the Knicks don't want to say how long Julius Randle will be out because of the trade deadline. They don't want to look desperate. They definitely need to add some depth. But then you look at it and you're like, do they really? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They really, like... As long as they can get healthy, which is something that you need, I think they can add another. They can add another big, even if they're completely healthy. You know, maybe another ball handler. But then I, I'm like, well, look at Deuce McBride, man. <laughs> look at Malachi Flynn. Like he's got handles. Like you know, these guys are pretty good. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I do think that it, it would help if they got another power forward there because Preston Chua is is good. He's been playing well, but he's going to get exposed, you know, against better players, you know, better bigs. And, you know, I, I do think that they need somebody else there. But at the same time, you know, that's a really tough, tough ask for Leon Rose to now break this team up again, you know, and add somebody again. Because, you know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But Evan Fournier is just sitting there on ice. Like you got, you can get him out of there and trade some protected picks or even a regular you know, unprotected pick. Who cares? And just get somebody else. Just add somebody else in there and somebody that fits and somebody that you know Jalen Brunson is is okay with that can play with. And let's rock, you know. And I, I do agree that Julius Randle. They said he's going to be reevaluated in two to three weeks. Not he's going to be back in two to three. Be reevaluated. So. That is very similar to the Mitchell Robinson injury reports. And all of a sudden it was dropped that he's out for the year. And then they tried to apply for the exception to get some salary cap relief. And they said, you know, the NBA doctor said, no, he's not. He might not actually be out for the year. So you don't get the exception like the Grizzlies got for Steven Adams, who was really done for the year. And then ended up trading him, I think. And um, which I'm surprised. I thought you couldn't trade an injured player, but that's, you know, sidebar. Um, you know, the NBA, you know, uh, collective bargaining agreement makes is so damn complicated for absolutely no reason, <laughs> but that's another conversation for another time. And, you know, it's just very exciting. And, and, and it's just, I just, I'm just, I'm just in awe of this team. I'm in awe of how well they play together. I'm in awe of Jalen Brunson and he, Jalen Brunson just is this guy that is just been so great. I, I was against the move from the beginning. Cause I thought they, you know, everybody was praising them for him because they traded an entire draft just to make up for their mistakes to sign a player that they knew they were getting anyway. Cause that's the, the uh, Leon Rose's son represents him is his agent. Like they knew he was getting, they were getting him. They hired his dad. Like they, it was, it was obvious. So like, why did you make all these give Kemba two years? Why did you do all these other random things that would make it harder for you to get him? But that's another conversation for another time. Cause it doesn't matter. Cause he's here now and he's awesome. He's a superstar. And He's getting into the MVP conversation and not Julius Randle MVP conversation from a couple of years ago, but like real MVP, like, oh, you should mention him because, you know, he's been, you know, the, the leader of the team, you know, but this is like he legitimately should be MVP conversation. He lost two starters and he is crushing it just like Donovan Mitchell, won player of the month and rightfully so because he lost two starters and the team was still 11 and two and he carried the team when the season looked like it was going to be over. Like, oh, my God, the Cavs should blow it up, then you know, tank and trade everybody. And now all of a sudden you're going to diminish it. You know, and Mike Breen had a great call. And then I'll get back to you, Mike. He goes, hit a shot. And he goes, Jalen Brunson, 
born to play basketball. And it was just one of those like, holy shit, you are right. <laughs> you know, and it just it gave every gave every Nick fan chills. And it was just it was great. The, yeah, no, he um, uh, I heard the call was a good call. And yeah, yeah. Brunson. Uh, the stars aligned perfectly for the Knicks. I mean, it really did with Brunson because you're right. It was all set up for him to come here. And I think. I think even in the moment yesterday when um, Alan Hahn was interviewing Jalen Brunson and he was asking him about the moment, you could see Brunson getting choked up and emotional. I think he was living his childhood dreams, right? Mm -hmm. He was grow grew up around all this. He grew up around the Knicks, Sprewell, LJ, and all of them. So even for him, he was like, holy shit, this is happening to me, or I'm yeah. becoming a superstar in New York with my dad. Um, and I, I tweeted about it because to me, I was like, that's a really cool moment. Uh, but also, I think the Knicks are going, holy shit, we are fucking lucky this happened. I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, and yeah, nobody saw him a, being this great. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and, and yeah. the real losers in this are the Mavs because they had him and they could have locked him up. And, Is it Steve uh, Nash part two for them, you think? <laughs> a little bit and a little yeah. bit. And I mean, you, you know, you this, this happens a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. You look at James Harden, who was good in Oklahoma City then gets to Houston and becomes an MVP and becomes the beard. Uh, it does happen. Sometimes you just need to go to a place you're comfortable with. You get a little bit better. You get old, you get older, you get the ball, you get more mature, you get the ball. Yeah. Uh, Cause obviously Brunson doesn't him and Luca would be a little bit different um, with how much they need the ball. It's his team here. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. his team. So no, I get that. You know, I would, I think about two years ago or three years ago now, whenever it was, when the Knicks lost to the Hawks and all the Knicks. But see, see, what happens is the Knicks will go into the playoffs. The fan base will be so cocky. We're winning in four. Yeah. Like four, four, so four, four, four. Yeah. <laughs> it just, and it just happens every time. So yeah. I'm banking that it does again. I mean, for me. Yes. I go think that's a good the bet. Hawks, yes. Oh, we're going to beat them. They lose in six. We'll sweep the, six, oh, the Pacers. Oh, yeah. oh, the Heat beat the Bucks. <laughs> we're, we're advancing. You lose in six. So yeah. I just would be weary that when the playoffs come, it does change. And the Knicks, with this current roster, if Julius Randle is not there, all right, particularly you're putting a wet blanket on this. I mean, they're not going to win if Randle's not back. As much as we've talked about it in the playoff spot, they go play the Bucks or the Celtics. How the hell are you beating Tatum and 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 Giannis? It's especially not without Randall, not you possible. Can, you can face the Heat in the first round. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah. scary. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry to jump on you, well, but that's like the that's East. A scary. Well, yeah, that's the, that's, East. that's the East. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. the that's the crucial part of playing. Honestly, you want to be a two seed because if you're thinking about first round matchups, this is. I used to do this with the Nets, Alex. It's a lot of fun. But the Heat are the seventh seed right now. I know that you right. got the, in, the, True. the you know the 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 tournament, whatever you call it. I almost said the in season tournament, but the, the playing tournament. Yeah. You know, so and they're the seventh seed right now. And if you get the two seed, then you're playing the Heat in the first round, and that's kind of scary. No, that would suck. <laughs> you know, that I'd rather play suck. the Bulls. You know, get me oh, the Bulls. So yeah, you know, you want the Bulls. <laughs> you know? you want yeah. the Nets. But you know, you got a lot of season left, and the deadline's coming, and and you don't know what the teams are going to do, and and that's the beauty of the playing tournament. It leaves these teams in it and they're not just going to blow it up so you know and the nets also just need to pick a lane you know they're not tra making trades you know they're going to make a, picks they're you know, going to they're i think they're going to have an explosive trade deadline i think they're going to make a lot of deals because okay. they have to right or wrong with what you think like sean marks right or wrong with what trades he makes if he stays put and doesn't do anything he, i mean it's chaos yeah, the team fan base the team, is gonna is gonna be up in arms. Yeah, the team <laughs> clearly has deficiencies in a lot they of places. Stink. You can say they stink. Say no, they stink. No, I, I mean they stink. <laughs> uh, yes, they stink, Alex. Um, but, but they're only saw, one game out of the playing tournament, so you know, you saw, I mean, they're see, they're right there. Yeah, I, and I know we kid we kid a lot about Ben Simmons, and mm -hmm. you know he didn't play in the game versus the Suns, which was so disappointing. Yeah. Um, but you see, when he's there, they are better. I mean, there's just, they are. Right. I, th there's no argument. When he plays, they are better. He is not a superstar. He is not a star. He is not anywhere near where he was in Philadelphia. But the Nets right now have no point guard play at all. Did when he's been a disaster. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. is good when he plays 10 to 12 minutes. He can't play 30. He gets exposed. You need right. him to come in, hustle, play some D. They need Ben Simmons to at least be 
um, competent. And the thing people forget about the Nets is Simmons takes up so much money. And I know you'll say they should have just cut him. But he takes up so much money, but which wouldn't have well, impacted. Stretch, stretch. Which wouldn't, not cut which him, wouldn't stretch. impact what yeah. I'm about to say. Yeah. When you look at roster construction, he takes up $36 million. He's making 12 more than Brunson. Albatross. So when you put a roster together, he and he doesn't play. That is insane to the rest of your roster. Of course, it's going to take some hits. He needs to play basketball. Nets need to make decisions on what they're doing. I think somebody like Royce O'Neal, um, Spencer Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, and, yeah. and the, uh, Finney Smith have to be traded, especially Royce and Dinwiddie on expiring contracts. You cannot let them just expire on the Nets and not get anything in return when they suck. It's and those are players that championship type teams would be interested in because they're role players on the bench that would be you know seven through ten not three and six right so the nets need to make deals it would be malpractice if sean marks doesn't have anything done um and and i expect them to make trades i have a stinking suspicion d'angelo russell ends up back in the nets that is crazy it's, it's comfort for sean marks <laughs> and he feels good about it um because he's been there I want to address this one part that there was an that the report about Mikel Bridges and the Houston Rocket Houston Rocket picks. Um, I think so explain Sean, it, so explain it. So the the trade out there was that the, the Rockets well, offered to give the Nets their picks back for Mikel Bridges, back. yeah, right. Which essentially, if you do that trade, you're back into full rebuild mode because you have lottery picks. You can and essentially you can if you lose, it's not as bad. And where are you going right now with Mikel Bridges? I think it's. Now, I don't know exactly what the trade was and how much protections could go back on these things. Right. But if you're not, it, let me put it this way. If Sean Marks inherited the Nets team two days ago, he'd make the trade. But because oh, yeah. it's his mess that was created, some his fault, a lot of it is his fault, a lot of it not his fault because of the guys that wanted out. Because of what had happened and Bridges is here now, um, he doesn't make the deal. But I'll tell you this. If it was Sean Marks who popped in like in 2016, 2017, he's making that trade. He's a different GM than he was before because of what he went through. And it's it's clearly apparent to the you know the 12 net fans that care. No, it's true. And and we talked about this last episode, too, where we were saying we both agreed that maybe it's time to just let Marks go. Because, you know, we, we thought like, oh, well, you know, it's good that he can come in and redo what he did at once. He can do it again. But, you know, at the same time, it's like it might be just better, best for a fresh face. Mm -hmm. And like you said, to your point, I totally agree that he definitely makes that trade. Uh, whoever the new GM, he or she would definitely make that trade in a second. Because mm -hmm. like every Nets fan is like, who the fuck cares? Like, you know, yeah, we messed up, but we messed up. Like, whatever. You know, it's kind of like. Every GM just tries to keep, you know, like look at the Jets with Zach Wilson. Like he's still on the team because they drafted him so high. You know, any new Very GM, simple. if Joe Douglas wasn't there, J Zach Wilson is gone, you know, before this season. You know, so it's 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 one of those situations where like these GMs have egos and it's not even just egos. It's just, you know, you just don't want to look like an idiot, you know, just but at the same time, the best, you know, then you can give Leon Rose credit for this to bring it back to the Knicks is that. He realizes his mistakes and then trades them out. And like, I don't want to give him credit too much credit for that. Like, oh, he's a genius. He's not. He's just he's, has some. He's self aware and says, "Oh my God, we screwed up with Noel. We screwed up with Burks. We screwed up with, you know, uh, Kemba. We screwed up with um, Reggie Bullock. Like these guys. Like, oh, let's get him out of here. Let's not resign him. Let's let's just let's just you know re let's pivot." And it worked, you know, and, and at some point, a GM needs to realize that they made a mistake and get them out of here. And that's one thing, you know, with football, again, the Belichick over his career, he's always done that. He's like, OK, get this guy out of here. Get this guy out of here. Get this guy out of here. Oh, I signed him, whatever. Get him out of here. You know, big, big deal. You know, just we'll take the hit. He's off the team. You know what I mean? So it's just those those are the kinds of things that you have to do as a GM. And Sean Marks, I guess, doesn't have that. But we also don't know all the details of the trade that was offered by the Rockets, true, you know, true. it just leaked out there like that Dorian Finney Smith trade. That was like, Oh, they, they declined the trade of two picks for Dorian Finney Smith, two picks by these, but these aggregator sites puts it out there and makes it so general. Like they would make like the, the Donovan Mitchell jazz trade with the Knicks. When that was rumored, it was like, Oh, the, you know, the jazz want nine picks from the Knicks. It's like, no, they want four unprotected and the rest are just protected nonsense picks. And they just, they, they, they the way they word it is like the Knicks said, you know, the jazz want all of these picks. <laughs> it's just like, you know, 
it, just relax. It, it's not it, it's the the tweets are worded for a way to to get a reaction. So you know to to be fair to the Nets, which I don't want to do. I want to kick them while they're down. But just be fair. Like you don't know what that deal actually was. That's yeah. all. So uh, no, no, it's completely, completely right. It's these are just reports that leak, and then you hear the two and the internet, and everybody goes nuts and. Oh my have, God! Uh, yeah, fun with it. Uh, Kevin Durant made his return to the Barkley Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nets didn't want a did... tribute video. What's that? <laughs> he I did not he want a tribute tribute did, video. But who knows what? He, who knows if he really meant it? I mean, he just because I, I say that because he goes on the internet and he just trolls people all day. He's yeah. interacting with and Cam with Thomas laughed people. about it. He's like, yeah, yeah he's just <laughs> having fun. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Cam and Katie very much respect each other. Uh, I, I don't know if he really meant it or not. I, honestly, if I had to ask, I think he probably did want it because I, I think it probably made him feel good about himself. He might be a little embarrassed how it happened in Brooklyn, how it ended and ha- what happened and everything like that. So maybe it's just know, a little bit embarrassed. embarrassed. I mean, he's done it so many times, you know, with Oklahoma City, <laughs> he's the used Warriors. To it. <laughs> I, I don't know if he could be embarrassed. I think he is used to it. Um, yeah, I he's personally, a veteran at that. <laughs> I, I was... Um, you know, so in full transparency, when he was introduced back, I was not watching the game because I was working. I had to work um, and I was out. So I didn't see it live in the moment. I don't think I personally would have booed him. I, I think it's uh, that's just coming from my end. I, I don't think I would have done it. Um, I, I did get annoyed by oh a lot of Nick fans going, oh, net fans not booing Kevin Durant. And if he was a Nick, we would have booed him. This is different. I'm saying, well, it probably is different, but you're not in my shoes. You don't know what it was like being a Nets fan growing up, and you don't know how different it was for me to have Kevin Durant join the Nets. So maybe you're right. Maybe it was different. But think about the perspective, which won't happen. Uh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't cheer him by any stretch. Like, I wouldn't go out there and be like, that's my guy. I just felt kind of dead inside about it. More of yeah. not angry, not excited to see him back and cheer. More just like, this is a reminder. And it is of just <laughs> how close they were and how far away they are now. And to me, it just makes me silent. And that's more of how I felt seeing Kevin Durant return. And that's fair. I mean, Kevin Durant, you know, uh, <laughs> that's funny the way you put that, you know, and, and, you know, I, I don't understand it because I, I, from an outsider's perspective, you know, Durant is, was the leader of the pack and he, you know, just tried to hide behind Kyrie, hide behind Harden, hide behind all these players and be like, and just silent and not say anything, especially when Kyrie was going through his stuff with the sharing of the anti-Semitic, uh, you know, documentary and book, you know, things like that. He just kept himself, he was just silent and, and it's just, you know, you know, he, and then he demanded a trade twice and, you know, we, we know the whole story. And so I don't know, I don't get it. And Knicks fans, the only you know, comparison that you have in the recent history is poor Zingas. And when he came back to the garden, the Knicks treated him like he was a piece of trash. <laughs> you know different. what I mean? And the Knicks won that game, different. you know, RJ Barrett had that spinning dunk on Luca and, and the whole thing, you know, but it's definitely different. You know, that was our guy. And then he turned his back on us and, and the whole thing, you know, so there's that. So I, I don't know. And our, you know, it's different when you draft a player and, you know, whatever. And it was just funny that that one viral moment. And then we'll get to the Jersey number yeah. trivia. The one viral moment with the uh, the fan, the Nets fan was like doing the heart thing with his hands. Yeah. And, and then the security guard, they kept doing it. And the security guard was like, sit down, bro. <laughs> like, I know, know that was like, pretty funny. <laughs> just like, bro, you're a grown man. Like, sit down. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's one thing if you're a kid, you know, but like, get like, what are you doing, dude? No, so was, it was, uh... that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just it, it was it was a little much. It, and what it did was you a think much. It was a about lot much. the Knicks not giving Obi Top? Then we'll get to Jersey number trivia. The Knicks not giving Obi Top in a, a video tribute. I thought that was a little bit disrespectful, and I yeah. think it showed that there's bad blood. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I would say, I think in the day and age and the times where right, um, everyone gets one. Everyone gets one. So it's clearly a statement that he did not. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that says more. It's not like this is 20 years ago. And you'd be like, well, of course he didn't. He played three years. He, you know, he was in and out played of the lineup. 12 games. Yeah. <laughs> but because yeah. of where things are and because quickly and Barrett and he is part of that trio in a lot of ways did not get one. Um, It's just a sign. No, they got one. They got one. No, yeah. no, they, they did get one. And, and OB did uh, not. He didn't get me. one. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It, it's definitely a sign that uh, something was a little rotten there. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, this is not, like, like I said, everybody gets one, 
So it's like everybody gets a trophy, but we're not giving one to Timmy. You know, okay, well, why? <laughs> That's how it felt. And again, how, how about this, Alex? Yeah. We're, you know, not talking about Obi's return. And I say it because just Brunson dominates and is so good that mm-hmm. all of these draft picks that failed doesn't matter. Leon Rose, <laughs> you know, he, 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 he was right. Fuck. Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, I still think the OG trade was a little much and they could have gotten him without giving up quickly, you know, but, you know, Barrett, I think it was over the time has run its course here. And he, I think he wanted to get out of here a little bit where it's just like he knew he was never going to be the guy here, you know, and um, with quickly, I think that it, they, they could have extended him. And if they paid, they tried to in the previous offseason, last offseason. But, it, you know, he kept rejecting the deals because he was like, no, you're not going to underpay me like everybody else on this team, <laughs> you know, and then not play me. Screw this. You know, so I, I respected that. So, you know, hindsight, you know, if you really put it together without the emotions, you probably could have seen that trade coming. But, you know, I, I just feel like they didn't need to do all that. But it worked. And but you know what? The Knicks are still winning even without OG. <laughs> so it's just it's really Jalen Brunson. It, it just cleared the yep. deck for him to just be really the guy, you know, so it's crazy. Your your most difficult game in this stretch was the Nets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I guess the Pacer game, obviously, too, was well, that was pretty hard. Trailer. Yeah. I, I don't think I got to think of it. I'll think about it and look at the schedule. Well, I don't remember so exactly. Many wins. All right. So I'll, many I'll wins read, I'm going to read you first. Jersey number <laughs> trivia sponsored by Dolan J. Trump. Uh, so you remember, ready? do the buzzer. So, Mike, we've done this three times in I the new era. And you got to say, that do the buzzer when you get it. Don't guess so the fans listening can uh, guess. I'm good. I read so, Mike's going to read time. some clues, and I got to guess it given by Dolan J. Trump. Okay, go. All right. He played eight years in the NBA, including two of them with the Knicks. Uh, <laughs> from 20, I hate that clue. <laughs> like from 2013 to 2015 with the Knicks, he appeared – in 107 games and made 18 starts, averaging five points and five boards in his best season. Okay. And he was a center. 2013 to 2015. So that's the 13-14 year, right? No, or is that the 12-13 year? See, that's... that's I, I don't, come I don't on. know. See, that, I don't you know, how can I figure that out? I okay. just report the news. Yes. Don't he was a lottery thing. pick in 2010 draft. Selected okay. by Oklahoma City. I, I hate when he does this. His career also featured stops with the Clippers, Houston, Minnesota, and Sacramento. Tomato. So Houston, Clippers? Clippers, Clippers, Houston, Minnesota, Sacramento. Okay. He was acquired by the Knicks via free agency, but he may be remembered more for being part of the James Harden to Houston deal. Ooh. Harder to Houston deal. Oh man, this is tough. Okay, keep going. He attended college at the same university as Danny Manning, Rafe LaFrance, Paul Pierce, and Mike's favorite coach, Jock Vaughn. Okay, so Kansas, right? So that doesn't help me at all. Um, okay. He wore number 45. Forty-five, and that's all the the clues, right? So, all right. Just, Likes to drink soda. I think is it Josh really? Harrelson? It is not. No, forty-five. All right, I'm going to tell you. Forty-five. You ready? Oh, uh, Cole Aldridge. You got it. Yes. Wow. Ah, not good yeah. in. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good work. Yeah, that was good. That was I'm good. not getting one on my ass. Uh-huh. I can just tell. I just know I'm not in the right headspace. I think you'll get it. You'll get it. Okay, ready? So next yep. close. I'll buzz. He, he, yes, please buzz. He played 11 years in the NBA, including two years with the Nets, their final season in Newark, and their inaugural season in Brooklyn. Okay. With the Nets, he appeared in 79 games and made 24 starts, where he averaged four points and not much anything else. <laughs> okay. I'm not getting it today. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, he was a second round pick in the 2003 draft by the Bucks, but now bounced around the league with stops in Charlotte, Houston, San Antonio, Orlando, and Chicago before signing with the Nets in free agency. Okay. He played ball under a college ball under Tubby Smith at the same university as Ray John Rondo, Kevin Knox, and Emmanuel Quickly. Oh, I know who it is, but I'm blanking on the name. Keep going. He was part of the blockbuster that brought yeah. Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce to Brooklyn. I know who it is, but my my mind is spaced. 
with the Nets he wore number 10. I want to say Tayshaun Prince, but it's not Tayshaun no, Prince. Not Tayshaun Prince. I know. I'm, uh, oh, who is it? You want to take like 10 seconds? No, my mind is warped. Keith Bogans? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, that That's era just. Yeah. Oh, you hated the Nets for, for about a year, right? Yeah. When, when they, they moved, moved from the, the, or the end of Newark. <laughs> you still watched. You were still a fan, but when, like, when yeah. That was, yeah. When I just. Uh, the emotion was gone. Yeah. The emotion was gone. And honestly, I wanted to give Dolan a win today. Felt bad. <laughs> Well, I didn't, so I got it. So whatever, Knicks, Lakers tomorrow. Let's get it national TV. Let's beat the Lakers. Let's beat LeBron. Let's let's make it ten straight. You know, only half game out of the Bucks for the two seed. Let's keep going. Let's get to the one seed by the break. Make a trade. Get you know, keep well, you're going. Six let's out go. there. So yeah, that's, that's going to be a happen. challenge. Boston what lost a little bit lately. They have. I think they're just bored. They have. I Replacement all stars are going to be for Julius Randle and Embiid, so we'll see what happens there. Who's going to get it then? You know, probably, uh, you know, Divincenzo. Divincenzo probably give it to Porzingis or Derek. Derek, uh, what's his face? Derek White, White or mm-hmm. somebody from one of the best. Adam Silver loves giving it to like random players on really good teams, like he did with Kyle Korver over Vucevic that one year, a couple of years ago with the Hawks. <laughs> you know, so that Vucevic trade terrible. Uh, yes. Bulls. Bad. All right, this has Mark been DeRozan maybe out there, so we'll What's see. What's that? Demar Derozan may be out there, available for players for, um, for teams. Just a note as well. So next week will be the draft, tr- the, the draft, the trade deadline. <laughs> the draft will be <laughs> the trade deadline. Season, please, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're now doing an NBA midseason draft. And there's seven rounds apparently. Uh, in, uh, don't run a four days. Uh, don't sell a silver short. He might do some crazy shit like might. that. <laughs> so we will be doing our um, trade special. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Uh, We'll talk off the air about it, but it should be fun. Yes. Um, all right, Alex, episode 206, Bad Weather Fans. Knicks rolling nine straight wins. Nets next game is against the Sixers on Saturday. No Embiid. You'll have to be rooting for the Nets because you want the higher seed. Yes. So you know, uh, Knicks nine straight, Jalen Brunson playing like and is a superstar. Alex, uh, have a r- wonderful rest of your your day. And uh, fuck, your team is good. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your first weekend without football. And, uh, you know, let's go Knicks. Beat the Lakers. And thank you. All right. Talk to you later, everybody. See you later. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.